As we move towards the end of the year, I thought it might be a useful exercise to look at the history of performance for War of Rights as a game over the past several years. To this end, I have charted the daily average player base by month, starting with January 2019 up through November 2024, using Steam Labs Steam Charts. I've chosen those dates as the full Steam release for the alpha occurred in December of 2018, and the data available in Steam Labs prior to that is understandably minimal, with low numbers which really don't offer anything interesting to talk about. I've chosen that measure as I think it provides a less volatile data point than peak players and a more accurate reflection of the overall health of the game across the full community, including the NA, EU, and Oceana player base. Peaks usually occur only at any times and miss the participation of those other players that don't participate at those peak times. In addition to charting out the daily average score by month, I indicate major updates that occur to help explain the data. Now with all that being said, let's get into it. Starting with 2019, we see two surges, the first associated with the initial release and the second generally aligning with the summer sale end of school year period, the latter of which will be a common feature for several years moving forward. After a slight decline in the summer months, we do see a general incline from September onward showing a generally healthy state of the game. We had four substantive updates released for the game during that calendar year. The first two, the last stand final push mechanic alongside the game mode of pick patrol, do not appear to impact the general decrease that occurred during those months. The new map pack of South Mountain, though, released that May, does coincide with an increase, although that time period also sees a general increase, as discussed above being summer and the sale time. Finally, though, the counterattack mechanic released in November seemed to also coincide with the general increase and indicates that it was helpful in adding additional players and didn't have any deleterious impacts on the game at the time. The 2020 period saw the pinnacle of the game's player base that summer. The onset of COVID-19 likely played a key role in this relative increase due to the high period of initial lockdowns in multiple countries and people not having anything to do but play video games. The initial half of the year, though, saw no growth, but the introduction of the summer sale and the other factor we just talked about sky skyrocketed the player base to its highest level of 351 average for daily players. The introduction of artillery was also likely a major contributing factor to this high performance. Unfortunately, the game did see a general decline after its initial release and did not see the same fall incline as occurred the previous year, despite the introduction of the Battle Flags update. The platform system was also introduced at the end of the year, so we'll see how that impacted in the next period. 2021 saw a relatively stable, although slightly declining, performance throughout that year, likely partially impacted by the lessening restrictions from COVID-19 lockdowns. The game did see a number of updates, including introducing anti-troll features and performance upgrades in the winter months. Further major changes, including battle reports and an increase to 200 player servers, may have helped stabilize a general decline, but the lack of a substantial improvement in July shows little indication that these additions improve the health of the game. December saw the introduction of an additional change for 300 player servers and adding two additional companies for the in-game players. So you would have four companies as opposed to just two. Lucky bullied by the 300 player update 2022, got off to a good start, but saw a rapid decline afterwards. With the exception of April, no other month surpassed the previous year's performance and showed continual stagnation in the player base for the game. This lack of progress continued despite the new game mode of Conquest being introduced in May, which failed even with the summer sale period to move the needle significantly. Additionally, updates for quality of life and luminescence did not appear to have any material impact. The year ended with the introduction of additional mechanical changes with traversal and minor destructible items, but was not looking great for the game at this period. It seemed to be stagnating quite badly uh, through those two years. 2023 started at a generally low point, showing little increase with the destruction update and a pretty poor performance in January and February. However, the contention update seems to have been a signal for a change with a sharp increase in March. In fact, for 2023 that year saw the best spring for the game on record, and for the rest of the year it outperformed all remaining months for 2022. 
The spring period that year saw a flurry of updates, including the NVIDIA DLSS, Veterancy, and Polish Pass, adding some features to improve performance and introducing a leveling system to the game. The summer period did also see the increase in the July period for the sales, showing some good health that hadn't been there the past couple of years. The general decline that occurs in late summer did level off despite the introduction of additional anti-trolling measures. However, a new feature came in the Dead of Autumn event, which saw a new increase into the fall period, which we hadn't seen in previous months, uh, I'm sorry, years. This new event, coupled with the Christmas event, likely helped increase player attendance in November and December, seeing the best performance for those months on record. The first half of 2024 remained stable, but strong having top performances for the months of February through June. This was likely buoyed by the network overall update in March, although we do see a slight decline in the months that followed. We see the July surge once more, coinciding with the 350-player server size update. The late summer decline does occur once more, but this decline is halted by the decaying autumn update event. Although I do not have full data for November at the time of recording, it appears that based on current numbers, it will be the best November on record for the game. So far, it has been a very good year for War Rights, and every month for 2024 has so far outperformed 2023, and at times by significant margins. So where does that leave us? With the exception of the artillery COVID highs of the summer of 2020, the game appears to have the largest player base since its release. And to be honest, that period in 2020 was a bit of a sugar high and saw a general collapse afterwards that continued for years. So it's in a pretty good position as it goes into 2025 for the war rights community. If I was to look at some general trends, though, there has been no new map updates since May of 2019 and no new enduring game mode since February 2023. Sorry, zombie mode, unless you stick around for more than two weeks, you don't count. We have seen a lot of performance and peripheral updates, as well as a generally steady increase in server sizes. However, those updates appear to be at best sustaining the existing player base and have not really led to major increases. But that is to be expected, really. You're doing quality of life stuff. It's not like, oh my god, new network updates. I'm going to stick around. But oh, wow, the game is still healthy, so I might stick around. And honestly, I can't say for certain that maps or new game modes will increase the player base as we have few examples to go off of, and those that we do have kind of give me a mixed record anyway. I would say, though, that the introduction of limited-timed events have shown to be successful in generating increases in the player base, and additional events throughout the year may be of use in creating additional spikes, like we see for the, the um, fall and the winter events. I'd also suggest major updates to coincide with the July spike to maximize that increase that happens quite often. Finally, as much as feasible, I'd suggest having minor updates be sprinkled throughout the year to show active engagement by the devs in improving the game, as there is some indica indication that they can help sustain interest through this, if not drive new interest. But as I am not a stockholder in Campfire Games, they are free to tell me to stuff any of those suggestions. But what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below what has been your favorite update and what do you want to see focused on in the future. Also, would there be any interest in me going over this data with leaders in the community in kind of a uh, podcast type format? Let me know. And anyway, I hope you all enjoyed. This is Kotal signing off.